Fantasy Fixer saddles up to ride with the Indianapolis Colts. And a couple of seasons ago, they just missed the playoffs in 2022. They were nowhere near the tournament. 4-12-1 was the record. Frank Reich was relieved of his duties midway through the season. And star running back Jonathan Taylor ended up injured and couldn't finish the year on the field. But... We've got some suggestions for Indy to turn things around headed into 2023. So, Dwayne, step one, what should the Colts be looking at doing this offseason? I think the number one thing they've got to be ready for is trading up in the draft to get their quarterback. Now, the good news is they sit at pick number four now after the loss at the end of the season. That puts them in striking distance. We've talked about the Bears before. They are sitting at number one. Probably not going to take a quarterback because they have Justin Fields but it's very much in play for them to trade down. We've got the Houston Texans sitting at number two. They've got to have a quarterback. And then at number three, we have the Cardinals. They're probably not going quarterback, but they could also trade down Marcus. That could mean three quarterbacks off the board before pick four. If there's one of these guys that the Colts really like, they need to consider trading up to one or trading up to three, depending on how the draft is going. So their intel is going to need to be really tight. Um, they've got this opportunity, right? You've been really on the pattern of, we're just going to recycle these older quarterbacks. We had Phillip Rivers come in. You had Carson Wentz come in. And then this year we had Matt Ryan. None of those things have worked out. Unfortunate, right? That Andrew Luck left, retired early, put them really into this cycle, but they've got an opportunity to truly break free from it and it could really help stabilize some fantasy value as well. We know how much having a franchise quarterback can propel a team to success. And as you mentioned, it's something the Colts have really struggled with ever since Andrew Luck walked out the door. Okay, so we have the Colts going out and getting their quarterback, but now you got to put him in a situation to succeed. Dwayne, how exactly do they do that? Yeah, I think you've got to find an offensive coordinator or a head coach, preferably a combo of both, that really run a quarterback-friendly offense. And what I mean by that, I keep it pretty simple. There's a lot of ways to win in the league. There's a lot of things you need to do with your quarterback. But something that we can easily measure are things like motion and shift. Okay, so that's something before the snap. You motion a player across the formation. It does a couple of things. Number one, it tells your quarterback, are you dealing with man or are you dealing with zone coverage? Knowing that before the play snaps is going to help them with their progression of their reads as the ball is snapped. The other thing you're doing is you're giving your offensive player an advantage. If you've got someone you want to protect from certain schemes, putting them in motion makes it harder for the defense to consistently account for them. It also is something that allows them to already be up to full speed, right? Or three quarter speed as the ball is snapped. So timing becomes something where you get that immediate advantage. The other thing you can do is post-snap. You want to be thinking about things like play action. You want to freeze those linebackers. You want to freeze those safeties. Doing everything that you can, right, to get the additional pause from the defense after the snap to create more yardage, more separation, more area for your weapons to work. And that's something, honestly, the Colts were terrible at this last year. Motion and shift, they ranked 30th, 39%. Play action, 19%. That was 28th in the league, despite coming off of two seasons where they're a really good run team. And then RPO, only 8%. That was 20th in the league. And then finally, trick look plays. So that's just giving the defense something they're not used to seeing. Again, they have to process that. And it's just enough to create that. What are we doing when the ball is snapped? Do you have your right assignment? Do I have my right assignment? And that little bit of confusion, that element of surprise works in the quarterback's favor. And they ranked 18th in that category. So we've gotten them their quarterback. We've gotten them their offensive coordinator and head coach. There's one more thing the Colts need to do. What would it be? I mean, they've got to upgrade the weapons here. The challenge, Mark, is, is going to be the fact that if they trade up to number one, it's probably going to be packaging their first pick in the second round. And that's going to put them at disadvantage because really, if they could make it work right and everything fell perfectly, they could hold it for, get their quarterback still, and then they turn around and use this early second round pick on another weapon. We've got Michael Pittman on hand. We've got Alec Pierce, a second round pick this year. Paris Campbell, free agent, could be moving on. But we also have Jelani Woods. He was taken in the third round. He was the second tight end off the board after Trey McBride, surprising a lot of people. But if we look at what he did in his brief time on the field this season, and again, it is a limited snap share. He did some really nice things. We look at his PFF receiving grade. That was a 68, only behind Pittman on the team. He also had the second highest yards per route run at 1.51, and his targets per route run at 17%. Now, historically, 
Frank Reich has loved to rotate the tight ends. So selfishly, we're also looking at this from a fantasy perspective. We would like to see them just really move to something where Woods becomes the guy that's on the field 80% of the time. We have less Mo Alley Cox. Let's get less Kylan Granson. Granson's had some flashes as well, but really when you look at Jelani Woods, he is a mismatch, Marcus. Six foot seven. This guy ran a 4.61 at the combine. Now look, there are guys that can come out and be workout warriors and they never really turn into anything. But I think when you take that athletic profile and then you look at what he was able to do on the limited snaps this season, Jelani Woods is the name that I would really be watching out for late in fantasy drafts. We'll see what happens in the draft. We'll see what happens in free agency. But right now, if I had to put a guy out there that I think is the dark horse to be the number two weapon in the offense in the passing game, I'm looking at Jelani Woods. There you have it, our three recommendations for how to fix the Indianapolis Colts. You can get more in-depth at FantasyLife.com, but we want to hear your suggestions. How would you go and fix this Indianapolis Colts team? Let us know in the comments section below.